Huh. I don't know. Eh, let me just replay the whole entire game. I'm, uh, I'm gonna have to think about this. Together we Released in 2017, Sonic Fox. <laughs> you, you, no, no, you, you know what? I, I don't give a shit about the history lesson today. I'm pissed. Actually, I'm peeved. Uh, I'm feeling a bit kooky like that. Classic! Sonic! Whoa, what the hell is he doing here? <laughs> Get out! Get out! Get out of here! You had your empire like three months ago, Christ! Haven't you taken enough from us? God, take his shoes, take his wallet, take his backup shoes, take- give him- Don't, don't give him anything, kick him out! <sighs> Oof. And it's funny, eh? when this game was revealed, even then it seemed egregious to have a double dip of classics on it, you know? No reason to really be certain he would be worse, but by oh boy, it was even egregiouser than we thought it would be. To everyone's surprise, there were tons of comparisons among the two, and somehow it looked unfavourable on forces, being next to the real deal. Maybe they were planning for him to be in the game from the beginning, but how Sega did not see the writing on the wall by the time Mania started is why they're good old Sega. You know, as they say, to be this good takes ages, to be this good takes EGAS! They must have thought that every Sonic fan would be ecstatic about the double dose of classic Sonic. Although it is hard to blame that thought process because of how much he's, uh, you know, uh, upheld. But let's say the situation is different. Generations, great game, right? If a Mania-esque game came out in the same year as Gens, they would have to share that spotlight of, hey, don't you remember the good old days back when real men died from lead poisoning? Well, you better hurry up and eat these pencils, or I will, you whippersnapper. <laughs> If that happened, generations would be seen less positively, the wow factor just wouldn't be as present. I mean, yeah, there's the fact that it was amazing and Forces wasn't, but ignore that. All I'm saying is this sh didn't help the game at all. By 2017, the novelty of classic Sonic right next to responsible adult Sonic just wasn't as exciting. Adding on to that, this series generally changes quite a lot with each new 3D entry. So reusing classic Sonic like this felt like a shoehorn, felt like a grab and a nostalgia, and didn't feel like much else except an admission of being scared to upset fans. And I wholeheartedly believe the game would have turned out better if he was discarded. I'm saying this as someone who genuinely enjoyed some of Classic Sonic's levels in this game, there simply wasn't a good reason for him to be here again. It sucks, cause scrapping him by whatever point Mania might have started would result in a loss of work, and that's not a good thing for any developer, especially on a tight schedule. But the alternative we got was a game that wasn't done any favours. I really doubt people were vomiting money at bosses exclusively because of Classic Sonic. They could and should have just redirected that effort into Gibran the Fox and Sonic the Man. We likely would have ended up with more satisfying level design. Uh, maybe a few more rings, if we were lucky. Hell, they didn't even give Classic Sonic any extra or bonus missions. That's how you know he wasn't a priority. And yeah, he's cute, but you know what else is cute? Gears of War. Guess what? That game didn't have to rely on Classic Sonic at all. And it turned out just fine. However, Sonic Forces is a game of many faces, you know? There's also the writing, the, the cinema, the Scorsese, the Shakespeare, the- Honestly, stories in games aren't really a big deal, at least to me. It's not something that I look to when playing a game, unless the story is the game, like in some cases. Well, like in my opinion, The Last of Us' story is kind of just on par with this skills commercial. And you know what? That really does say a lot about how good The Last of Us' plot is. But that doesn't mean stories can't negatively impact experiences. Although they don't deserve criticism as in the case of Sonic Forces, there is a lot to unpack here. The story opens with the Eggman surrounded by tubes. According to Arbot, he means serious business this time. Yeah, no, good point. Slavery is on the lower echelon of shenanigans. This is indeed right before Sonic gets ceremoniously bounced around 50 times when Tails, in his infinite wisdom, looks at his stupid orange iPad he's had since 2008 and makes the conclusion that this guy might be kind of a dick. And then he doesn't do anything else. Well, let's not get it twisted. 
What the hell is this? Sonic is getting his shit kicked in this badly by Infinite? No, wait, sorry. I, I mean, who could that silhouette be? I sure am interested to find out more about this shadowy figure. Either way, it's hard to believe Sonic could be beaten up by anyone. I mean, he's really being manhandled. Just downright ridiculous. Relative to what Sonic has faced before, it's pretty obvious that he's gonna win this. Come on, I mean, we're not stupid. Like, Who's gonna buy this, right? Uh, there's zero tension here. It's Sonic the Hedgehog. Obviously, he's gonna clutch this. He he want. D oh, oh sh. Oh, I'm just playing forces. After this, Eggman takes over the world. Okay, okay, wow. This truly is an upsetting and harrowing moment. <laughs> Good thing it wasn't presented in a cutscene. I would have stripped all the emotion out of the story. Cause I have to say, this is dark. Maybe a bit too dark for me. Hell, I already want Sonic back. <laughs> oh, how I miss his smile, his dental records, the way he- Oh, thanks, Sega, I appreciate it. Sonic was supposedly murdered when Miss for six months left his best friends alone and fighting for their lives in a dark, war-torn world. You know, the usual antics. It's pretty dark, but everyone's reaction to Sonic being alive is kind of underwhelming. Not a single tear, not a sob, everyone is just a little stiff. It's like they were in on the script and just have to pretend like they were completely surprised by this development. The reunion between Sonic and Tails is, I don't know, meh? Like they just kind of touch hands, it isn't even, they don't even fully hug. No way! That's excellent! Oh yes, I am kind of pleased. Everyone truly thought he was dead. But it just comes off as kind of, okay, cool, that's happened. Uh, let's take a look at the next plot point. Now I don't think Force's overall story is the worst. I, I can see they have lots of words, the characters interact. You know, it's got a certain mystique to it. But the story and writing will constantly pile up questions in your mind. One of them being, what? Another one of them being, what? Actually happened to the Chaos Emerald. Why is it that no one just uh, concusses Infinite with the power of the emeralds? Well, according to Sonic Comic Issue 4, yeah, they don't tell us shit. All we can do is speculate why. It's never brought up for zero reason. Their backs are this hard against the wall, to the point of almost being wiped out, but no one grabs the dragon radar? Ah, maybe Smokey the Bear can do it. Let's give that a shot instead. Such a major part of the Sonic lore, completely ignored. <laughs> Oh god, Sonic and Dead torture? Oh no, I hope he's in agony. You know, it was mature of Sega to even outright write this into a kid's game. Hell, I'm surprised it even went down this route again. But here it is, Sonic's classic, infamous torture zone, brought back in 3D. And he's unharmed. Oh, why, why would you do this to me? That's not what a tortured man looks like. God, just give me some blood. You guys killed one child like two decades ago. I've been thirsty for blood ever since. But I get nothing. He wasn't whipped. There wasn't any pummeling. He wasn't even scratched. This was nothing but a confusing attempt at edginess. And they didn't even really attempt anything. Like, think about it for a second. Eggman wins, traps his middle-aged nemesis in there for six months. But do you see anything done to him? No. No hit marks, no roughed up skin or fur, or whatever the hell he's made of. Oh, well, he's still wearing his goddamn shoes. And Sonic sure as hell doesn't act like he was just tortured for half a year. Maybe he was mentally and psychologically tortured, but like, they certainly don't say that. Sure, it's one line, yeah, but the point is that they just gloss over it. Either break his nose, or don't go down that route in the first place. Sega, you've nurtured far too many lunatics in the past 30 years to go around teasing us like that. Eh, maybe I'm just nitpicky, but I think it says a lot about the game's lack of commitment to its own concept. Not to mention, there's a whole six month period where we have to fill in what happens with our own imagination. Really, it's my fault this story sucks ass. Speaking of ass, Shadow the Hedgehog. All right, hear me out. I'm pretty sure my line of thinking with this is right. I think when writing episode Shadow, Sega might have actually completely forgotten that Shadow doesn't actually enter the story to clear his good name until stage 15. That's well after Sonic is freed, well after the whole war starts. So going by the way they structure it, Shadow is caught in an illusion while trying to save Omega, he eventually escapes it. Infinite declares that not even Sonic will stand a chance, and shortly after, Shadow finds out 
went through Rouge that Sonic was defeated by Infinite right at the beginning of the game. So that begs two questions. Where was Shadow for six months? At first, I did think he was stuck in Green Hill, but they make it very clear when he escapes that he was pretty much available at the beginning of the story. Oh, and why did the Resistance not realize this thing wasn't Shadow? What's up with that? They were clearly in contact with Rouge, who knew Shadow is a decent, hardworking man with a loving family who would never attack an innocent civilian. And are you seriously telling me that Infinite never used his clones throughout these six months? Surely that would have been enough information for them to know these were fakes. Shadow is equal in strength to Sonic. There is no good reason for him being absent. There is no good reason for Shadow not being involved until midway. They really don't bother to tell you where he was. Among other things, it's left unanswered. Oh, and then there's the uselessness of everyone who isn't playable. Characters who are pretty much close to Sonic's level couldn't do anything against Eggman or Infinite, really? They do tell us what other characters are doing in some parts, but come on, show or don't tell. I just rarely feel drawn in to what's happening. Radio dialogue can only do so much. And then there's Tails. Now Tails isn't the strongest character or the beefiest, or the least yellowest, but man, this is hard to watch. You have to write a book about his characterization to know what's wrong here. I can understand Tails being shaken up after his friend's supposed death, but he was never someone who'd roll over and let himself get attacked. He's not supposed to be powerless. We've seen him step up many times in the franchise, even if you don't want to count playable Tails in the classics. Like we'll take Unleashed for example, Tails is surrounded so he tries to fly away instead of personally dismantling every creature with his bare knuckles. That's fair, they would likely eat him if he stuck around here, yeah? that's just logical. The important thing is, he doesn't bend over, he does something about it and hides. It's just astonishingly bad writing that doesn't acknowledge past Sonic stories and shows Tails to be weak. Now to be fair, I could kick his ass, but in SA1 he did beat Chaos. You know, the one with what, I, I think. Yeah, no, he beat that one, yeah, yeah. This really shouldn't be that hard for him. It's not even to mention that he has no reason to assume Sonic could help him. For all this idiot knows, Sonic is dead. It just feels like a sloppy excuse to introduce classic Sonic into the fold. They really could have introduced classic into the story in so many other ways that would have avoided this really bad moment. But okay, Sonic forces, you do your own thing. And you can't forget how everyone liked to act as if the Avatar is an innocent rookie with little power. Power. Y you have to be kidding, you just spent an hour destroying and obliterating facilities. Normal rookies don't do this. You sure about this? The kid was shaking like a leaf the whole time we were at the death end. What fucking leafs have you been watching, Vector? It's stupid. This rookie has balls of steel. As evidenced by his immense power. Why the hell are you scared? You're proving their point. Did you not? Just spend five minutes destroying about a hundred of these? Yeah, you did. I don't get it. Jibber and the Fox is clearly strong. Strong enough to partner with Sonic even. How many other recruits are like me? I'm special! Me! Sonic is my best friend! What does calling me a rookie add to the story, Knuckles, huh? Motherfucker. What did you even do the whole game? All oh, right, and Knuckles led many fathers and sons to their deaths. What a rookie. Well, whatever. I guess there are more important things to bitch about. Like how the Phantom clones are as strong as the actual characters. Meaning a Zawa clone's power is supposedly equal to his power in Lost World, and Shadow is as strong as Shadow himself. But if that's true, you really expect me to believe the average Chaos clone could just be killed in one hit? Unless there is something I'm missing here. If it's just meant to be the first form of Chaos, well, even he wasn't that weak in the original game. And the same goes for the Shadow clone, he just gets decked once and immediately goes down. That doesn't add up. You'd think they're like grunts, but then there's also the Metal Sonic and Zavok bosses who take multiple hits before they go down, and clearly demonstrate clones can have lots of power. And on top of that, the same clones don't seem half as strong as those two boss 
boss battles in this little final battle. Like, look at his shadow. He's really effective at getting rid of them. If these clones were really that strong, I don't think anyone in the resistance would stand a chance at all. Sonic included. In fact, he didn't stand a chance. But then that all goes down the drain. Because if they did stick by what they write, there'd be no way for the good guys to win. Also, the Phantom Ruby prototype, which happens to be powerful enough to stop the sun and saves the Avatar from certain death. You know, the same thing that the Avatar just luckily finds on the floor in the Mystic Jungle. It sure is swell that Infinite's butt pocket was loose. Very convenient, not a cop at all. And what reason does he even have to show mercy to the one thing that can stop him? Meal pattern boldness? No, Sonic. There is no reason besides Sonic's life being a little important to the franchise. I get that Infinite's character is supposed to be cocky, but does being a cock have to equal being a moron, being a fool, being a jester? Perchance? No. He then proceeds to spare the one person who's resisted his illusions. Like, this must have been the first time his magic tricks didn't work. The first time his power is ineffective, but it's okay, it's okay, I'll let him go. The end is inevitable. The custom character death definitely won't make the end inevitable when the end does come and they don't even wrap up what happened to the two villains. Meanwhile, all of these guys just stand there and watch, as Gibran the Capybara is there to defeat the ultimate threat. An infinite just stops caring, I don't blame him. But my biggest problem is how the Avatar's role in the story completely minimizes every other character's potential impact and makes them seem weak. Obviously, you want a custom player character to feel strong, empowered, like their decisions matter, that's part of the appeal. But in a franchise like Sonic, where there's already a world of strong characters and established canon, you have to do it in a way that doesn't just dismiss all of that. Like, who wants to believe the custom character is stronger than Shadow, Knuckles, Rouge? He's supposedly the only one who can do all this? Even I hate his guts and he's supposed to be me! I know why it's hammed up this way. Gameplay-wise, it's empowering and most younger fans obviously don't care about the specifics, but a good way to avoid making the OC look so much more useful would have been to have more threats involved in the story and actually showcase other characters you know, uh, doing something. It would have also made the game seem like more of a wide scale war. But uh, uh, what, what's done is done and what's here is something very frustrating, something that just lacked cohesion. It's hard to truly have stakes in this type of franchise, they won't just brutally kill off Vector with a massive paper cut to his elongated snout. You know Sonic won't just snap one day and become the origami killer. The mainline games will always have a level of predictability in their stories. Even the best stories do. But why even bother to attempt this type of stories? If you won't stick to your guns, if you won't give every small detail the attention it deserves. There's Sonic the Hedgehog. There's lots of critics and casuals that won't care about that stuff. But you don't have to choose one or the other. Multiple Sonic games have proved this and even the comics prove this. Although if you have grown up or will grow up with this game, I get why you'd love it. I it has its moments and when you want overthinking every detail, I can see why someone would like the story. But it's even more disappointing when you consider the genuinely strong building blocks that make up the game's concept. Everyone was pretty excited at a plot where Eggman would get his empire, with a major focus being on how Sonic could even lose, how exactly Eggman would have gained such a stronghold on the world. I do think some of the execution was good, but it is overshadowed by everything else. <sighs> You could say they didn't really control themselves very well when writing the story. You could say they really didn't control themselves very well when writing the story. You could say they really didn't control themselves very well when writing the story. You could say... First of all, the baby boomer. Oh boy, they sure did outdo themselves. Who we? These classic controls are so smooth, they're like Butter, if Butter wasn't actually Butter, but a controller. Connected to a machine, playing a classic Sonic level on the game, Sonic Forces, released in 2017, November. Come on, guys, Butter isn't supposed to feel like this. I just don't get it. You mean generations like six years ago, and okay, it wasn't the same people exactly, but it's not like Sega doesn't have access to that game and its files. Hell, I know for damn sure you people are familiar with the classics. You re release one every internet 
national holiday. So making him control like this really was a choice that they stuck with, an intentional decision that they were really fine with that got through playtesting. Air control is just a bit weird, combined with how weightless Sonic feels at times. It makes platforming clunky, but it also screws with the way you need to collect momentum as classic. I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to be feeling when controlling him. There are 20 different emotions going through my fingers when I play this man. He does go from bad to fine when you utilize a drop dash because it picks up the speed for you, and the only thing you need to worry about is timing the jumps and whatnot. But classic Sonic gameplay really should be good with or without a drop dash, or hell, the ultra spin dash. The sheer fact that you can go back to these old games and still have a good time says as much. Hell, the speed in general feels very limited, like you're just not capable of going very fast without these boost pads, which are so fun to collide with all the time, every time they should fucking put these in my house. I've always wanted to break my neck, it's on my bucket list. I also quite enjoy travelling at a safe restricted speed and making sure I do not exceed the speed limit. Do not you? Yeah, the wake up call for me to quit speed was the time I played Sonic Unleashed and I woke up to 700 speed tickets. Now in my defense, I didn't know the bus was bomb free, but it's not just the running speed limit. Rolling down a hill also does not increase your speed at all. It's just that. He was more fun to control in generations, even with the issues that that game did have. So being a new Sonic game with similar mechanics, it naturally should be trying to improve on that. Uh, like look at Peggle 2. I don't have a point, just look at it. And after all, Classic Sonic is rooted in how he controls, how his physics work. You can't just put him in a 2D space and decide all you need is the aesthetic. Because without that Classic Sonic feeling, it's an imitation. He can go want all he wants, the heat inside me will never die. And like I said, having the real deal right there didn't make this guy's controls look any better, it just rubbed salt in the wound and furthered the fans do it better discourse. I can understand not keeping in momentum for modern Sonic, but how did they not get that this isn't what people want with classic Sonic? It's just sad they still didn't learn that because this just kind of sucks. Then there's me and my bestie, yeah, little tidbit about the controls, when I press forward, he actually goes forward, yeah, it's, it's crazy what these consoles are capable of, the future of gaming is very exciting. But as well as Sonic, you have the Avatar, whose controls are pretty much the same. Although there are some differences as you can have different controls depending on what you equip them with, for better or for worse. While some items do actually make the Avatar control better, he really should just be good on his own. Now he does not have the boost, but has the wall jump, so yeah, uh, exactly the same. The thing is, I don't think these are the most terrible controls, as it's manageable with what the level design entails but successfully controlling this game really does boil down to playing around the controls and learning how to take advantage of the jank. And naturally, avatar levels lack the boost, so the movement and momentum problems are actually more noticeable, as the levels tend to call for this thing called <clears throat> free movement. Even if you're never in a situation where you need to turn around, it's still pretty annoying that turning and controlling at high speeds is like this. Unlike Sonic, the Avatar also has that jarring boost of speed you get when you're starting to run, which I hate. Uh, you get used to it at some point, but on first playthrough, uh, it, it was frustrating. Hell yeah, I wanna fly off the world after touching the control stick with my fingernail. The Avatar really should have just had adventure controls, lost world controls, anything but this, because this boostless Sonic-ish character never quite feels right. Look, after 25 years, almost 20 years of 3D games by this point, Sonic controls really should never be bad. If anything, they should be refined and perfected. Colors, generations and only should not perfect control-wise, but they do have a learning curve that you can adapt to and feel amazing when you get the hang of it. But forces control 
muscles are busted either way, the curve may as well be a doe kekko gigon, which is probably a shape. I just don't know how Force's controls ended up like this in the development process. Almost like they knew the controls were bad, so they designed the levels around them because they couldn't figure out how to fix it. Okay, I mean, I, I doubt that's true, but the only other conclusions are that they knew it was busted, didn't care, or that they genuinely thought these controls were tight. Although, it is pretty respectable that the fellas at Sonic Team took inspiration from the Resident Evil franchise and incorporated tank controls. Like, this alternate pathway in Luminous Forest is the most awkward thing to access. Something like this should flow naturally into what you were doing. In lots of other 3D Sonic games, it would. But because of how Sonic moves, you'll end up awkwardly hopping and killing your momentum. And it's such an insanely particular way of doing it that it completely goes past being the skill issue. This is a problem with the game design. 2D controls for these two really aren't that bad. The problems here really do boil down to how modern Sonic's speed goes from 1 to 100 real quick, making his platforming a, a bit jarring when it's based on careful platforming. It isn't too bad, but it's also not the nicest Sonic can control. And his double jump is definitely a little stiffer this time around, so as a result of this, his platforming can feel uh, imprecise. The Avatar carries over those problems, but has more of a sluggish jump. Although maybe that's just me. If you don't have anything equipped to make you go faster, or straight up control bearer, you aren't gonna have the best of times controlling your OC. And hell, the matter really isn't helped by how only one species gets to have the double jump. But when you get a rhythm going, it's okay. And that mainly goes for the boosting, especially with how boost jumping works now. 2D platforming can occasionally feel pretty damn smooth. It's just that, well, how did we go from one of the most expansive moves that Sonic has ever had in a game to this? We ended up drifting in Lost World, but we had the bounce. Kick the, the, the can you not do that, you savage? Why the hell would you take away the drift? Oh, Sonic's wall jumping. It's baffling to me that they didn't even attempt to add it back in. These curved sections in the avatar's level where it would be convenient have to be forced and all made upon you because they couldn't add a feature that was in three games at this point. And I know for a fact everyone fell off here while clutching the drift button. I was just at a loss at this pun. It was the moment I realized just how disappointing the game was just so below what you expect for a modern platformer. I don't really have that many difficulties actually controlling the Amazis characters anymore, but that's only because I've now played every inch of this game for a long time. It felt awful at first, but hey, now it's only less awful. It's just funny to me that they were so aware of the bad controls that in the Zavok fight, your controls are straight up different to how it is in a normal level. You don't get that weird acceleration, you don't go into a sprint of lunacy, you can- <gasps> Turn. If it controlled normally, this would beat the shit out of any Dark Souls boss. That's not even my opinion. That's just a fact. You know, you can't argue with facts. So don't try. It sure is a good thing the great Zavok is merciful. <laughs> Here we are, the most important part of a Sonic game. Next to the quill length and belly colour, it's definitely up there. The game is pretty often flamed for being a straight line and for playing itself. Just a hunch, the flamers may just be onto something here. But I will say, I don't think forces needed a litany of alternative or branching pathways to be a good 3D Sonic. That would have helped, but I, I can enjoy the thrill of going fast, even if it is linear. One of the most beloved 3D Sonic levels is pretty much a straight line. Uh, not literally, but uh, yeah, yeah, no, also literally. There isn't a single alternate pathway in this whole level or a different route you can take, but that doesn't stop saying this game from being so much fun, from being a highly replayable level. I think the biggest contributor to this game giving many people a sucky feeling is the level length. The various issues with how they do pacing, obstruction, or uh, whatever, would be a lot less noticeable if you were, on average, on first try, spending your first time in these levels for at least three minutes. Sonic is supposed to be about the thrill of speed, and Forces provides that without letting the speed soak in, because I can enjoy these levels by overlooking various flaws if I could just keep going on, but it's always cut short before you can get settled in and get a feel for the levels. Keeping my speed going for uh, oh, a minute, no wait, uh, 10 seconds, uh, it really doesn't feel fulfilling in the same way blasting through modern green hail would, because I 
didn't really blast through that much anyway. Something about the 3D levels just feels so limiting. You just can't say that for the other three boost centered games, because it's central to what actually made them so fun. Now sure, the issues do boil down to more than just length, but I would say length in a Sonic game has throughout the decades been linked to skill. I mean, hard layouts with a hidden quicker way through will inherently make a level longer or shorter, and a large amount of the game really isn't hard. I just can't help but find it ironic that Boost to Win as a term has pretty much been around since Unleashed, because Boosty was supposedly skillless, it's just holding the X button, and there yeah, no, there's absolutely nothing else going on here, it's just X. Oh sorry, I mean hold Parallelogram or Octagon if you're one of those people. The term really only gained some truth when this game came out, so I think I am of the belief that they only created forces despite the entire gaming community. My theories have yet to be proven wrong, so it may as well be true. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that Sega took half of the bones from the body, but they didn't have the skin, they didn't have the organs, they didn't even add the chompers. How do you forget the chompers? It's like they wanted the player to always be able to go fast and never be forced to go slow, no matter how good or bad of the game you are. They didn't want stuff like this in the way of the player experience, punishing segments that are meant to entice exploration through repeat playthroughs. That's because it does bug down the experience for the unskilled, I mean sorry, peasants who don't play Sonic very often. Die Hard fans will be able to approach their generally well designed and tricky stuff with relative ease, because there's a lot of experience in how to handle it, but it's easy to underestimate how hard Sonic games can be for the average player. 3D Sonic requires a pretty different mindset from many other games, so it's not an easy task to balance the appeal. That said, I don't think this approach was a good solution. Instead of teaching with overall progress, they just made it very simple and easy from the get go, and kept that easiness throughout most of it. The majority of the game's levels just lose their fun pretty quickly. There's not much I'm replaying if I'm seeing the same parts over and over again, with nothing that I really need to be uh, overcoming, you know? Sonic levels have those parts you need to crack that you want to crack so you can keep going. A reason to keep coming back, because you keep having to take the easy route instead of nailing it. There are a few standouts like I've said, as not all of these levels are sleepers, but with a lot of them, you know what to expect, you know you don't have that much to explore, you know you won't screw it up, so you lose that feeling of excitement really quickly when you barge into the same robots and realize there's more of the same up ahead. You try looking for other pathways, sometimes you find them, most of the time you don't find anything. And you realize, wow, this is really it, huh? This gameplay loop gets boring real quick because you just don't get enough agency to truly feel like your movements matter. And that's very obviously a horrible thing. To have in a platformer of all things, Sonic Force is almost never really feels like a grand experience because of this. As they say, the train station. You, sh you, sh you should probably walk to platform 20. I think uh, th there are food places around the station, so if you want something to drink, yeah, maybe, maybe some utilities, it's the best time to do so. Make sure to have your uh, tickets ready, uh, as it'll be arriving shortly. Because it is indeed on the rails! <sighs> Get on the fucking train. Luminous forest, metropolis, aqua forest, jungle, rainforest, one of those. Lost Valley. God, Lost Valley. Easily the worst offender here. Both of these pathways lead you to such imaginative, magical play. They're just set pieces. What's even the point of that? These are examples of what I mean. It's too simple and combined with how quickly these levels end, it's insulting. And it doesn't stomp there. There are many times they decide you just aren't allowed to play anymore. I don't mean oh my thumb hurts i've been pressing this for like two seconds ugh no i mean time to play some sonic forces Time to c cook a three course meal all right that's not true we shouldn't exaggerate this stuff that leads to misconceptions two course automation has been in sonic games before but I'm sure it wasn't this common or to this extent. My time is very valuable, and with all these seconds this game needlessly took away, I could have looked at the ceiling for like uh, at least a minute. But no, I'm not allowed to have a personal life, thanks Sonic Forces. This fucking cliff, insane. Wow.
That was like two feet, I'm impressed. It was worth it to interrupt the gameplay to make sure the player landed there safely. It also highlights how much of a wasted opportunity the grappling hook is. There are a few cool uses of the hook throughout the game, but most of the time it's just there to look cool and be flashy. Hell, even Sonic Boom used it better. It's just crazy how much of a pace breaker this is to be playing normally and realize you've lost control. And it always feels so forced in. Set pieces are one thing, but extensively taking my control away from me only makes the levels feel that much more lackluster. And yeah, these automated moments don't last that long, but ah oh well, I feel petty today. These automations truly signified the deep downfall of gaming as we know it. As for the complete lack of obstacles in places where they should be, mods have shown some levels in a different light. Some people might discredit these because oh, it's just asset placement. Amateur bullshit. But you know, they really do go a long way to making these level layouts more interesting to run through. And I swear, I find myself wanting to go through them again and again. They didn't even add any alternate pathways in most of them. It's just really fun to get a clean run. It makes the base game seem much worse by comparison. And seriously, if I didn't stress it enough before, having to play more varied levels with the regular controls really is a goddamn challenge and again proves how bad the controls are when faced with any level of depth. To even get the most enjoyment out of the base game, I simply had to treat it with a kind of arcade mindset, and not as a Sonic game. Just enjoying the ride and doing what I can to cut time. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing for a game to be designed like Sonic Forces, but with the context of being a mainline Sonic game, after decades of expecting a certain design philosophy to be consistently followed, it's not right insulting. Just why couldn't they give me obstruction? I, I want to slam Sonic's face into the most gruesome death trap currently available and I want to go back and avoid slamming his face into it so I can feel good about myself. It's not a bad thing anyone can pick up and play Sonic Forces, but it does that while alienating anyone who wants a challenge, which again is a reasonable thing to expect from this franchise. Sonic games have been designed to mesh simplicity with depth, to satisfy everyone, to be fun for everyone, and not just people who only want the simplicity. Generations did this, Colors did this, the classics did this, most of the classics did this. Both extremes of hard and easy just don't suit the franchise. It's disappointing because you know they could do better than this. You know there was only a six year gap between one of the best Sonic games and this. And then there's classic Sonic. What a disgusting, appalling affront to all devoted video game fans every- Yeah, no, I don't have too many problems with classic Sonic's levels in this game. Just that they rarely feel great. Like, the classic stages from generations are better than most of the ones here. But what do I know? Now I'm just being entitled. And hey, I just realized Minuscule Sonic didn't even get a classic Metropolis level. Ah, uh, this game really is unfinished. As a classic level design I don't like, well, Casino Forest would be one of the crappy ones. Different strokes and everything, there's a lot of love for Casino levels, but the world would be a better place if I never heard the goddamn bum sound again. I haven't felt joy in a long, long time. I just don't care about any of this. It's an empty experience. I don't even know what I'm looking at. It barely feels like an actual level. If anything, it's like a really beautiful fancy test stage. I don't, I don't know. It just exists. It's really annoying to play, but also I just don't give enough of a sh** to compose a thesis on what pisses me off about it. It's too much. Isn't it fun to engage with all the enemy, all one of them? And then there's Iron Fortress, which, well, you know, you know, only some of it is demonic, which, come on, that's, that's not too bad of a ratio. Auto scrollers in Sonic have never been a good idea, because it doesn't matter how good you are, you won't be able to make it go faster. Yeah, we got the vibe that people like Sonic 2. Here's the worst part of the game. It's so damn boring, it drags the experience, it extends the game's playtime by 34%. I 
fully understand why why they put it in. The rest of it is just really, really boring platforming that's strictly awful to navigate with how classic controls. Seriously, trying to make some of these jumps and keep yourself steady is like a new level of difficulty. I didn't have too many problems controlling classic until I got to this level, which makes it very clear that the Iron Fortress isn't the level, but the friends we made along the way. And also my desk for taking the abuse. Well, either way, this game's level design as a whole was unbelievably disappointing. But hey, what if I played the exact same stages but with a twist? I'm allowed to put in even less effort. Surely that'd be fun. It was not the grandest of times. So, Supersonic. Are you surprised or are you gobsmacked? Either one is a suitable reaction here. Yeah, it's uh, j just supersonic. Uh, there's not much I can really say about it. <gasps> Thank you! Why? How is it Sega of Japan, Sega of America, and Sega of Uruguay somehow never realized while developing both of these games at the same time? Yeah, hundreds of sales analysts, marketing analysts, industry veterans, guys in really nice suits. I mean, like, uh, like really, really nice suits. Like, really, really nice ones. Uh, how did no one realize? Like, really nice ones. Like, uh, how, how did no one realize that Supersonic, a long-standing franchise tradition, probably shouldn't be paid DLC in an already lambasted game, or while not being paid DLC in the other Sonic that uh, just came out? Oh, fans are upset. Make them upset. In the first place, they had the gall to add this after launch, something that was an in-game staple, a bonus for the dedicated fan. In the second place, uh, you have to respect the balls. Not being a part of the game at release was already pretty insulting. I just remember being bewildered that the final boss didn't already end with it. No handsome infinite form of uh, well, whatever. Or something else that's not handsome. Important thing is there was no handsome form. Of all the DLC and forces they could have made a paid bonus, they chose the one thing you don't need to be greedy about? Was it supposed to be reverse psychology? Or like, just not very good? Psychology? Both Colors and Lost World gave it as a reward for getting all the red rings. The only time you could ever use it before that was in a final boss or by earning the privilege. It should be free, everyone with a soul would probably agree on that. But 1% of people agreed that it shouldn't. So we have a clear winner. Charge the player 10,000 yen to skip the credits. It's just wow, it, it totally eliminated all genuine faith I had in Sega at that point. Yeah, I know, I'm a very forgiving person. To look on Twitter and see that sweet message was just hilarious. Did they really not realize how much the Sonic community hates buying things? I, a brave soul, even boycott, hedgehog me. That's how much of a diehard fan I am. Now to be fair, it was never officially put on sale. But also, to be fair, they f***ing tried it. But even with all the things forces did badly, there were of course smaller things that were Aggravating to see, well, isn't that just great? For example, Modern Sonic just straight up doesn't have idle animations. Just none. This man is perfectly contensing in one place. Speed be damned. And I have to say, I admire that. Because even I don't have idle animations. So really, who am I to talk? Oh wait, no, sorry, he actually does have one. Wait for it, just wait, there, 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 he, see, he moved an inch. Just insane that the character who exists to emphasize attitude sits there with a blank look in his eyes. It really is a shame he lacks that personality. Even Classic and Avatar got idle animations. Even the Free Falling has animations, and then there's three of those bitches in the whole game. The priorities for attention to detail in this game were nothing short of discombobulation. <laughs> However, what's important is that the quick time events do work. The time events do work. These things were more or less equal to uh, about a fraction of the game's playtime. I think 
half and having to do it every time you wanted to replay a level was such a damn drag. If I already know there's nothing after it, it's especially more of a drag. Really, it's only another reason this game gives me to not get back on it and replay anything. Admittedly, it is really cool to look at and I do enjoy the cinematic appeal of it. I, you know, I could say the same about most things that move, like my fan collection. Okay, well no, that, that, that actually is pretty cool, but it's only like that the first time you play the level. Any time after that, <laughs> this is getting dangerously close to a Telltale lawsuit. Or it's just quite rude. Aside from being a helping hand towards S-Tracks, you really don't add much to the stage. And that's not to mention that you really can just button spam your way through all of it. No issue, just there is just zero punishment for your heinous actions. Wow. Well, you may as well teach the youth that murder is okay, Sonic Team. And is that truly the future you want, Sonic Team? I didn't think so. I didn't think so. Do better. On the graphics side, Eggman Empire Fortress is a little bit ugly compared to the rest of the game. Something about it overall just feels very unpolished. Although I really don't know if polishing would fix anything since even the colour scheme being used here is pretty dull to look at. Yeah, I get that it's supposed to be a fortress, very intimidating and evil. What's evil about the colour grey? It just wants to be appreciated and st stands for intellect and compromise. See, the rest of the game does still look pretty damn good, so it is just a bit jarring. And uh, how could I forget that Chaos and Shadow never even had boss fights in spite of being in so much promotional material and also it never being publicly revealed that you don't fight them. God, that's a, such a dishonest way of mock- No wait, actually now that I think about it, yeah this actually is a pretty fucking major issue. Why couldn't you let us kick their asses? <clears throat> Sorry, I, I, I felt a tad enthralled. I forgot I was British and said ass instead of ass. Oh, apologies. Condolences. I am sorry, and in Metropolis, Knuckles says that the illusions aren't real, as if that fucking helps anyone. It doesn't even matter if it's real because it's established that the illusions cause pain to people either way. Why did he say that? And like, that's also how Infinite is so powerful. In the first place, <laughs> the commander of the Resistance, not the one in Star Wars, shouldn't know that. In conclusion, Knuckles is a bastard. War Criminal. This was a super exhausting game to play on release. As a hardcore Sonic fan, I became a softcore Sonic fan and just didn't really care about the franchise for a while. Exhausting because it felt like the game ended up this way for no good reason after years of patience. Seriously, it was until I played Sonic Generations and that really rekindled my life for the franchise. At the end of the day, Sonic Forces isn't putrid nuclear waste and it didn't kill everyone I love. But on the other hand, they did make Tails say true that. So I'm kind of split. What can we take away from this whole experience? What lessons could be learned about expectation? The world is a huge place and the galaxy well the galaxy is even larger than that but the world the world is truthfully very much smaller than even that but hey, through all of this at least i made sure to pre-order the cool bonus edition meaning i got these sick ass posters. I understand if you're jealous. It was worth the pre-order. It was worth the dignity. It was, it was, it was worth the disappointment. No, it was, uh, yeah, no, uh, it really was, man. It, 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 it really, it really was. <sighs> uh,